Coach, what's it, uh, what's it like being back on the ice officially with media people watching you now? I never thought I'd be so happy to see you guys. <laughs> it's where, good. It's good to be back. What are you seeing out there from the guys this early in the season? Just, 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 yeah, yeah, I think everybody, like I say, every coach loves their team in September. Um, but, but there's a level of detail and focus and... Uh, just all around depth and skill, you know, that, that we're excited about this year as opposed to really any other. So we're excited. We're two weeks away, essentially, from being able to show what we can do. You think players at this point sense the urgency of approaching now, trying to get all the systems out of them? Yeah, you know, I think I think systems-wise, we're in really good shape. They've grasped everything really well. I think now it's just figure it out what the lineup's going to look like, you know, and, and guys know that, that nothing's set. Guys know, I mean, we have three power play units all over the field right now, so it's up for grabs. It's all going to be about detail and habits and execution and practice. That's what sort of is going to dictate what the lineup's going to look like on October 2nd. Um, but uh, it, 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 there's a level of urgency and, and depth and backside pressure we've never had. So I mean, we're going to have some really good players in, in dress clothes on our home set. Greg, I know you, you talked about this a lot, but you've got uh, a high expectation for this team. So you're really proud of that you've ever had. Uh, is the team aware of that? How do you, I guess, how do you send that team into the team? How do you manage the expectation? You do it, you do it in practice. I mean, you know, the pace and the habits and the detail every day you have to be demanding as a coach. You know, and, and, and if you are, and, and your team can execute the way that you want, day in and day out, which so far they really have. Uh, we have not had a bad practice or a poor practice yet with bad pace or anything. Um, it's going to translate. So, so that's, that's my job. My, my biggest, you know, most important part of my job as a college coach is Monday through Thursday when they're here with us at the rink um, and, and demanding all those things that we demand when the puck drops. And then on Friday, it's on them. What was waiting around this summer for answers? How uh, different was the summer preparation this year? Was it anything like the years prior to last summer? It was really back to normal in every way. I mean, we were, we were very proud of the fact that our team and our staff are 100% vaccinated. So we have we have that too. Uh, you know, this is some, it's one big less thing to worry about. Um, we know we're not having to go through the daily testing and contact tracing and all the things that we had to go through last year uh, because we have 100% compliance. We can focus on hockey, you know, and, and it's a huge advantage for, for our team. And, um, you know, we're able to come here and just prepare. It's, it's, it's been about one thing and focusing on what's in front of us right now. That's October 2nd against UMass Lowell, and that's all we're doing. I got a thing in practice that you changed as a result of, you know, kind of getting back to not being in separate rooms, not being out on separate times, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we're in limited hours until October 2nd. That's just the weird thing about our sport. Um, so we, we, we've, we've templated pretty well what works and what doesn't to prepare them as best we can um, for the first game. But everybody's under the same rules, right? So. You know, four hours essentially on the ice with pucks a week and then four hours conditioning or in the gym a week. It's all you get. It's all you, you play. So, um, you know, we, we've, like I said, you know, we, we've, we've, through trial and error, found what's successful, what makes us successful, prepares us the best. And, um, and we've gone back to that. Last year was, was completely different in every way. Um, and hopefully we never have to go back to that again. What's, what's the energy like in the locker room with the guys knowing that they're going to have some home games here and you don't have to travel and, and just getting a sense, like you said, just hockey now, you don't have to worry about a lot of extra curriculum. It's been great. I mean, they, they show up every day ready to work. It's, it's one of the advantages we have. We have an old, experienced team full of veterans that have helped us build this program are excited to be here for another year. Um, and, and we have to play with a chip on our shoulder because of what we went through last year and, and we don't believe that what people saw last year is indicative of where we're at as a team or a program and we're excited to prove them otherwise. Kind of jumping on that question, um, what would you say is your biggest takeaway from just having such a all-around tough schedule last season and what maybe from that might be a big factor coming into this year? So we're built on adversity. That's, that's what we prided to build ourselves on in every way. And, it was just another, you know, you know, obstacle that that, that was put in our way that, that we had to overcome, and we did it. Um, and we were through it, and we're ready to focus on a new season. And um, it didn't kill us; it made us stronger. We're here today, and 
we can't wait to get going. And what's the, uh, you know, you talk about everyone's got to earn their spot and things like that, but as far as the goaltenders, Cole Brady really, you know, you don't have to worry about splitting time. It's kind of just, you know, it's his job to lose, I guess, right now. Um, you know, for you personally, having just one guy going into the season, uh, what's that like? Um, well, I, I certainly, you know, Cole has come into the season as our guy. There's no, no secret about that. Um, I will say Ben looks really good. He looks really good. If he had to play tomorrow, I'd be very confident that we would win with him. So um, we love our depth there. The, they show up every day. They were working hard. Cole's healthy. He's, he's in a great frame of mind. Uh, we're excited for him to have a big year. And, and uh, the other guys when called upon, we, we know we can win games with them. So we, we love our depth there. How do you plan on incorporating the new graduate transfers this year? Um, you know, those guys are here to help us win, you know, so, so they, they, they could have gone really anywhere they wanted. Um, and, and it was made abundantly clear to them from day one that they got to, there's no waiting here, right? You, you don't feel it out. Don't, don't dip your toes in the water. You're in all the way or you're out and they're in all the way. They're, they're going to be leaders that help us in, in every way on and off the ice. Jack Becker was a captain of Michigan. Colin Tyson was a, an alternate captain of Notre Dame. Uh, Tim Theotoritis was an alternate captain and leader of Bowling Green. So these are guys that um, that are here. They're here because they believe that they can come to Arizona State and win and, and get us to where we want to go. And, and that's why they're here. So they're they're one of us now. It's as simple as that. When you are this close to the new building now, um, how do you feel just about like the last season here and this in the room? You know, does it does it change anything at all, just in terms of okay, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I mean, for right now, it obviously feels normal until you, you you go back to campus and drive by that, and you're like, holy crap, it's it's, it's coming, right? Um, so it, it's normal. We're going to embrace it. We, we we owe a lot to Oceanside. Um, we'll we'll miss this place. I don't think any of us will shed any tears when we're done playing here, but. <laughs> Um, but we'll miss it. You know, it's, it's, it's been our home. It's what we know. We've been able to build a program out of this place. We're grateful to the people that, that have allowed us to do that and supported us along the way. Um, but, uh, man, next year at this time, we're not going to be standing in a public locker room. We're going to be standing in an actual uh, place to gather and, and, and call home. So it's, it's exciting, but we want to go out with a bang here. We, we owe it to this place and all the people that helped us build this program. How was it putting the schedule together this year? It, you know, it wasn't, it was pretty, pretty easy. Um, we had a lot of teams that owed us trips from, from going into last year in COVID that honored their trips and we still have more that, that owe us moving forward. Um, so, you know, getting the 20 home games was, was great. We were, we were thrilled about it after what we went through last year. Uh, we're 24, four and two in our last 30 NCAA games here at home, so we like playing here. We're good here. We're confident here, um, and it's a recipe for success in our eyes. So thinking back to how Jeff's question, like every season has been obviously building block and the foundation of this program. But do you view this season the same way, or does this feel more like a launching point to something new? Well, I mean, it certainly is is a tremendous opportunity. I mean, knowing what we have. Going into next season into a brand new $115 million arena with a team we're very confident in, with a schedule that, that we believe we can have a lot of success, and it's tough, but what we believe with the amount of home games, the experience we have, everything, it, 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 it like I said, we're, we're set up to do very well. We gotta stay healthy, we gotta stay sharp, we gotta stay focused, and we gotta take it one game at a time. Um, but certainly, internally, we have easily the highest expectations we've ever had. With back-to-back uh, -back games against UMass Lowell to kind of start the year, is there almost a sense of urgency to come out of the gate stronger in comparison to if you were just kind of playing any other team, especially kind of going into this year, having home games, having you know a more favorable schedule, I guess you could say. Is there yeah, I mean, the, the schedule from a, from a home and away standpoint certainly is favorable for the first six at home. Um, we, we've really only had, in the history of our program, one good start. And it was the, the first year we made the tournament. You know, we, you know, we slept Fairbanks at home and then, um, you know, came and played Ohio State really tough at home and, and, and then went to Huntsville and started four and two. 
really the, the next year we were going to make the tournament again. We started one and three last year. We didn't have a great start. So getting out of the gates and kind of playing with house money a little bit and, and, and playing downhill is, is, is paramount. And UMass Lowell is a, a hockey East power. It's not like we're bringing in uh, any sort of layup. They're going to be very, very tough. There's going to be great games. And then you go to Denver and you're back here against another really good hockey East team in, in New Hampshire. So the schedule is, is tough. The, the teams we're playing are tough. But again, we're confident against anybody in this building and, and believe that if we play our very best here, that, that nobody will beat us. Should be. Yep, it should be. Uh, last year, Copperod was you know one of the top freshman point getters in the nation. Um, he had a fantastic year in the toughest division in hockey. What are the expectations for him with the experience that the whole team in general was able to get playing in the Big Ten? Now coming back here and being independent again. Well, it's never going to be harder for any of the freshmen than it was last year ever. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. So I think that's the the mindset that. Guys like Matthew Copper have to go into this year with. I mean, he had 13 goals in arguably the toughest setting you could you could drum up for any freshman at the collegiate level. All road scheduled the Big Ten, um, limited extra work put in with coaches because of COVID, limited meetings, limited team meals, they limited everything, limited workouts off the ice, and the kids still found a way through all that to score 13 goals, which is really impressive. So. Um, as long as he continues to stay hungry and, and doesn't, you know, approach this season like it's going to be easy for him, he'll he'll surpass that. He's a gifted kid. To jump off of that, when you prepare what he can bring to the table with a full season of Johnny Walker this year, what do you expect from those two, and what that does for your offense overall? I mean, it's 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 a it's really a wealth of spoils. You know, I mean, it's not just those two. I mean, you have those two that you can probably split up and, and, and spread throughout your top six and be a threat literally every time they're on the ice to score a goal. Um, it's 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 gonna be fun to watch. You know, and there's other guys too. So it's figuring out, you know, where the chemistry is and, and where we get the balance. We wanna be a, a team that's built line one through four that is, is really tough to match up with and compete with. Um, guys are gonna have their roles, guys are gonna be you know, thrown out, you know, regularly in D-zone situations, stuff like that. So we have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. I think we'll start to put that together next week, um, maybe even tomorrow. But uh, having those two in, in your top six um, makes it easy to fill up the rest. Sort of uh, jumping on that question is having those two, you know, they've been around the ring a few times, obviously they're graduate players. Does that kind of... Is it, a, is it a benefit that they're going to kind of bring that leadership slash like better presence to some of the younger guys as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's again when you have four fifth-year guys from your own program come back, and then you have three fifth-year guys from other really good, successful programs. And these aren't guys that that were just you know guys there. They were go-to guys. They were they were leaders and, and guys. I mean, Jack Becker's played in the Frozen Four. Colin Tyson's played in the Frozen Four. Theotritis has played a huge role from day one for a very successful Bowling Green program. So these are guys that that are difference makers where they're coming from. So when you tack those those guys on to the experience that we have returning, um, yeah, there's just no excuses. There's no excuses here. You know? and, and we uh, we that's why we have high expectations of ourselves, and um, and we're excited to go prove it. New uniforms this year. Um, how are the guys feeling rocking the new you know, jerseys out there this upcoming year? Probably. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You know, there were mixed reviews online <laughs> on social media, I guess. But uh, I stay out of that stuff. I think when they when they all get on and, and wear them at the same time, they'll look pretty sharp. I know um, you have Big Ten returns coming next year, but is it kind of weird to go from playing all Big Ten to no Big Ten? I mean, a little bit, you know, it's, we're used to, we, we really enjoy the independent schedule and the diversity of it. And, um, it's tough. It's, it, when we are used to a different opponent every weekend, um, it's an advantage, right? Like the, the, the teams and conferences aren't used to that. They're used to getting to know their opponents and their tendencies. And when they have to prepare for a new team in us every weekend, it starts to add up. And that's when you start to see, I think, us getting stronger as the season goes on as an independent. Um, but the Big Ten schools will come back, and, and we have some, some great matchups scheduled in the new arena um, for when they start to trickle back in, and we're excited for that. Last for you. Good.